Whether you eat DNS attacks for breakfast or are just interested in a few insights, this session is for you. Please give a warm welcome to Uriel Gabay, Senior Security Researcher at Pantera. Hi everyone, my name is Uriel and I'm a security researcher at Pantera. Uh, so today we're going to talk about how an attacker can abuse a very simple misconfiguration related to DNS and establish C2 communication uh, based on DNS. So information about myself. As I said, my name is Oriel and I'm a security, res security researcher at Pantera and I'm doing research on infrastructure, cloud environment, ransomware and web applications. Today's agenda is to understand What's the motivation from an attacker point of view to use C2 communication based on DNS? Why not to use, for example, HTTP? We'll see uh, different, very basic architectures of uh, that include DNS mistakes uh, for isolated network. We'll see how an attacker can abuse it. We'll dive in into the technical details on how to implement DNS uh, for C2 communications and uh, what's the challenges to do so, and how to overcome the challenges, and finally, how, to, how, how we can mitigate ourselves to be protected from this kind of, uh, from this kind of uh, communication. So let's begin. So motivation, what's the motivation from an attacker point of view to use DNS and not HTTP? So let's say I have an organization and I want to, I want to check my isolated network to see if it's well isolated or not. So I'm asking for my security guy, please check the firewall rules. And the security guy is checking if there are any rules that allowed communication from the isolated network to the internet. And there, is, there are not. Uh, so what about DNS in this case? If the isolated network is chained to the main DNS server of the entire organization, well, this is a problem because in most cases, the main, the main DNS of the entire organization is chained to a public DNS on the internet. So it basically means that we can resolve a DNS record of the internet, for example, google.com, right? So from the attacker point of view, it's like rule that uh, flying behind the scene, something that could be skipped by uh, by security by the security guy, and that's the reason in attacks we are seeing DNS involved more and more over the years. So now let's see uh, basic architectures of isolated networks that involve uh, misconfiguration related to DNS. So you can see in this structure we have on the left side we have the isolated network. And the only uh, rule that allowed in, in the firewall is the DNS rule from the isolated network to the main DNS server of the entire organization. So from the security guy perspective, there are not communications directly to the internet, but still because uh, the main DNS of the entire organization is chained to a public DNS on the internet, so we can resolve uh, records, DNS records, uh, of the internet from the isolated network. Another structure is when we have a dedicated DNS for the isolated network, but still this dedicated DNS is chained to the, to the main DNS server of the entire organization and from there to a public DNS server on the internet. So the result is, uh, the, result is the same. We can still resolve uh, public, DNA, public uh, DNS records uh, from the isolated network. We can still resolve who is google.com, for example, from the isolated network and to send it uh, and to, and to uh, get a valid response from the internet. So implement C2 over DNS. So in order to understand how to, how to implement DNS communication uh, for C2, uh, we need to understand what DNS is. So we all know uh, the the basic uh, the basic purpose of DNS. We have an host name, and we want to try to translate this host name to to an IP. So in DNS, this is only one type 
of DNS. This is, it's called A type. So if we want to translate host name to an IP, we are sending the host name with DNS A type and we're getting back the IP version four for this host name. We have lots of type uh, in DNS protocol. And we have two types that we must understand uh, before we are before we dive in into the implementation itself. One is NS, name server. Name server, if I'm sending an host name with uh, an host name with name server DNS type, I'm basically asking, please give me the host name, the remote server actually that responsible to answer for this record. TXT type is any text provided by the record administrator. So the administrator of this record can put any anything, any text, any description, any uh, something that uh, describes the, uh, the record itself, and we can get it. If I'm sending an host name with TXT, record, with TXT record, so I'm getting back the TXT provided by the administrator. So name server record, as we said, I'm sending the host name with, uh, with type of NS, and I'm getting back who is the server responsible for this, and the DNS record eventually will change to this remote server. So for example, if I'm an attacker, from here we understand that as a prerequisite, an attacker needs to buy name server record in order to communicate with a remote server. So if I want to establish an attack and I want the communication to be based on DNS, so I need as a prerequisite to buy name server record, for example, let's say Pentera.io, right? And uh, any subdomain that under Pentera.io will eventually the DNS, the, requ the DNS request will eventually get to me. So that's the way I can get requests for DNS to establish name server record. So this is one. This is a prerequisite for an attacker. TXT record, as we said, as an administrator for this record, I can write anything I, I want uh, in the TXT for this record. So this is a very good idea for attacker to use to get command to, to the C2 client. If the C2 client is asking something so I can send the, uh, I can send the information back based on the content of the TXT record. So now let's see real example. So as you can see, if I, on the left side is the isolated network, the, the isolated network. So if I have a C2 client that try, try to communicate with me, so the C2 client will send, give me a command.pentera.io. So as I said, as a prerequisite, the attacker needs to buy name server on the public, uh, on, the, on the internet. So anything under Pentera.io will eventually uh, will eventually get to uh, to the uh, to Pentera IO name server record, which as a prerequisite belongs to the attacker. So now, if I'm sending, give me a command, for example, which uh, which this is the uh, the request dot Pentera dot IO. So eventually, it will be sent to the attacker name server record, right? And because this is a TXT record. Now the attacker can send information back inside the TXT content. So that's uh, that's basically the channel to, in the first part of the DNS record of the request, I can exfiltrate information. And in the content itself of the TXT record, I can send the information back to the C2 client. So now let's talk about attacker's challenges. DNS in most cases based on UDP. And this is why we, are, we have no error detection and we have no control flow uh, as we have in TCP, which is built in in TCP. And another challenge is we have from the fact that DNS RFC, uh, in DNS RFC we have limited length and we have bad characters that we cannot send, uh, we cannot send uh, using DNS. 
So let's see how to overcome those challenges. So we have uh, three general phases in order to overcome those challenges. One is to do base 64 for the content. We'll see in a few slides what's the meaning of that. And after that, we will slice the content into small pieces. And in order to control the uh, in order to control the uh, control flow, so we will set uh, a purpose symbol that basically will say to the remote server what's the purpose for this DNS request. So let's dive in into the details. So let's say I have a control based on DNS and I have C2 communication based on DNS. And now I want to run the command. I'm telling the, uh, the remote agent to run the command IP config. And as you can see on the left side, this is the output of the IP config, which includes a lot of bad characters and uh, line breaks and a lot of things that I cannot send using DNS. So the first thing I'm going to do is to do base64. And by doing base64, I'm actually avoiding using bad characters. After that, we have the length limit. And this is why we are slicing the content into small pieces. And after that, we are sending piece after piece using the purpose symbol in order to have a, some kind of control flow. So in our case, with the letter B, I'm telling the remote server that this one should be buffered. And with letter F, I'm telling the remote server that this one is the end of the content. And from now on, it should be uh, merge all the content and then do uh, decode base64 decode back to get the original content. And we have another purpose symbol, H, which uh, basically this is the heartbeat of the remote uh, of the remote agent. So now let's see a real example. So as you can see, we have we have an information that we want to, that we want to send. This is a JSON information. So we are doing a best 64 uh, to the content and we are slicing it and we're putting a B. Uh, on the uh, on the start of the uh, the DNS record, uh, just to tell the remote server that this one should be buffered, and we are sending it with B B B B B that all of them should be buffered, and finally we are sending it with F, which basically F, um, the meaning of F is to take all the buffered content and then merge it into one, and we have H, which is the outbeat that just telling to the remote server that I'm alive. So this is how we can use, uh, this is how we can use DNS as a C2 communication. Mitigations. Here's some ways for you as a security professionals to mitigate this threat. The first and the obvious is to use a dedicated DNS for the isolated network and to not connect it to any other DNS server in the organization which behind the scene are chained to a public DNS on the internet. Two is to monitoring the DNS request. As we see, an attacker must send a lot of DNS requests per minute in, or in order to exfiltrate information. And the length of this request are big than the, than the, uh, than the normal. So, we need to raise a red flag if we see a lot of DNS requests per minute or unusual uh, length of DNS requests. To summarize, attackers will try to communicate over DNS because this is very easy to misconfigure. And even that it's not that easy uh, to, impl to implement, attackers will always strive to overcome technical challenges. And finally, we need to remember the mitigations. We need continuously validate our infrastructures and our implementations, and eventually to do a monitoring that everything is okay in our network. So that's it, guys. Thank you for joining to the Exposure Summit. And if you want to learn more, visit Pentera Labs. Thank you, Oriel. That certainly got me hungry for more information from Pentera Labs researchers.